I would definitely look at it with Russell. The area is leaking from a heating system that failed. In the in the contract, the rental agreement, they are responsible for uh, repairs to the roof or the outside and inside of the building. Basically, they've got to repair the whole building. Um, and speaking with council today, I would say to the board that since we've got a pretty good condition, I think that maybe this board would like to fix what we have there and not put the burden on them. Do we have estimates? No, I this I found out this early yesterday with it. So, so that, the, the lease has never gone in, yes. but the reason that we don't have in the 40 to approve or disapprove so that we don't have down the road, well, you fix that so now you can get it. That's why we're, we're identifying the reason why we are getting involved is because of the existence of the other side. So, without an estimate, yeah, what are we? Thank you. We're talking two spots probably that would have to be, I don't know what they call it, sticky ceiling where they would reapply a film over top of it to heat it up. I, I I would be afraid to guess what could be three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. No, but I mean, it's, we vote on anything without. I, I think we're just voting on a, the fact that it's going to be a pre-existing repair. Um, I don't. I, I have not contacted the insurance company about it to find out. I'm not sure whether they will. But that will be the first thing we do. But we won't be able to do the insurance company unless we want to do it. Otherwise, we're going to make them do it. I think I mean, the concept would be that you know lease it to you would, I think they were expecting it and I think we perceived that we we're here with them with a watertight group. Like a watertight, but then after that, that's yes, theirs. Yeah. So you need a motion to either authorize to proceed with the with the roof for the Leak that is the weeds that we uh, were involved previously. So I'll make that one. That's it. Oh, perfect. I know. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> the joy of landlording. Yes. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have a request for a 30 day waiver on a. Oh, I'm just, yeah. and I may be out of line here, but while we're on 93 main, you wanted to talk about. Um, yes, we might as well do that right now. Yes. Um, before I move on to 5.3, uh, to restrike the parking lot up there. And I spoke with Russell and I believe that the committee had already discussed taking the parking spaces that are uh, diagonal and making them vertical along going up the hill. Just, the, yeah, just the, just the, the ones up the hill. That sort of face the, the building. Yeah. We're backing up already That's right. on a, a nightmare. So, and make those parallel to the fence. fence. And two of them will be handicapped anyway, right? We could do two so, of the handicapped. And... So how many will, will probably three? I, no, I think you're, there, there's five counting in a handicap now, and I think you'll end up with four. Right, so we'll lose a couple spots, but I think it'll really we'll open up. It'll open up. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah, I think we talked about that last. We did. Yeah, down there. We did nothing about it. We, uh, and now that it's time it's to re idea. redo it, um, yeah. yeah, it'll be fresh paint. So I will forward that to the painters, and I will have them contact the committee, board committee members, so that you know a time of but well, we know the place, so we just need the time. Right. But the board doesn't need to do it. No, I mean, no, no a, a good discussion. But yeah. At least I, we know the committee and the, the board want to have it done, so that would be taken care of. 
on uh, liquor license. So there was a request for the 30 day advance notice to the local municipality um, for the Narrisburg Coffee Creations at the Tustin Cup. This came in uh, after our last meeting. So we kind of we're at the end of the 30 days, but we can give them two days. Um, A motion to waive the 30 days notice to the local municipality. Uh, we stay in liquor authority for the member meeting of custom companies. I would make the motion. Second. Further discussion? So they're going to start serving coffee that has liquor in it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is just for the municipality. It's really just a waiver. It's up to them to make sure the, the SLA does it and then uh, whatever else they need from the board or the uh, building department. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Spectrum uh, for service. We've made some discussions about the uh, either Frontier or Spectrum for the voiceover internet protocol service. That since Frontier no longer uses the MyTel system. Um, neither one comes out blaring. Uh, but in talking with the clerk's office and myself, uh, Spectrum seems to be the better of the two. The cost is just about the same. Communication seems to be a big part, portion with speaking with Frontier versus speaking with, with Spectrum. We're getting faster and sooner responses when we speak to Spectrum than stay on the line with Frontier for five hours. Happy clerk, happy board. My experience, I mean, just as a consumer, has been the same. Yeah. And we're supposed to have it as, as of right now, we're supposed to have a dedicated fiber line and we're supposed to have a number. You can call this number and we're going to get right to you. Five hours. I said in the line for someone to finally decide, oh, we no longer work with Mitel. Excuse me, you what? been fun. Um, seems clear. I'm sorry? No, it seems yeah. clear which direction. So going. motions uh, to authorize uh, moving forward with Spectrum for the voiceover internet protocol. I'll make that assertion. In a second. Is that for our, for our basic, to keep them as our provider as well for internet? Yeah, we'll do both. We'll still have Frontier because we've got Frontier hooked up for the street lights when that okay. gets done. Okay. I'll okay. second. Further discussion? This isn't going to, so with six and one half dozen the other, and this is all within the budget that we have. Yes. There are still, yeah, yeah there, there won't be a budget change on it. Um, although Spectrum offers a shorter time frame group as opposed to the five years, which is what you're doing. Which is nice. Yeah, prices are still the same, but you're not. Yeah, five years in dollar communications yeah. alone. You know, things could change. Um, I'm going to move 5.6 in front of 5.5. We record it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're back. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Some kind of issues. Um, I want to move 5.6 in front of 5.5 so that after everybody falls asleep at 5.5. Um, I had a request uh, from Jane and Sullivan 180 um, about better maintenance, especially like along Kirk Road. Uh, she would like to hire Lee Allison for the weeding and the plant maintenance and the pruning of the trees and weed whacking is needed for two hours a week um, for the rest of the season. It would be two hours a week at $30 an hour. 
end of season being when the trees no longer need to be pruned or the weed whacking is done in October. So probably, yeah, probably yeah, probably September, October, yeah. I would say. Okay. As we get a warm spell into December. 62. So it's about 750, 100,000. Yes. And who is this? Is Lee you? Allison is the name. She's a, a master guard. Okay. Pay for what you get. She's very talented. This is, I just, I'm just trying to think this through. We have people who volunteer to do this. Different areas. I understand, but we're because like the beautification group doesn't do Kirk Road. Right. I'm just saying, well, people's noses just feel out of joint that someone's getting bad. Absolutely not. Okay. I'll tell you something else. Anybody that takes that job on, there is no direct water source. You have to. Left it in my camel. This weather, everything's dying. That's what Sullivan 180 is. So the answer is it, you wouldn't Absolutely you wouldn't no. have a problem. I, that's what I was worried. Sometimes when you pay people yeah. for what people used to be volunteering, you lose volunteers, you know. But we've heard from the volunteers. So you need a motion to approve this? I do. All right, I'll move that. And a second. Second. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, 5.5. .5, I had that under water tower. That that actually is incorrect. I told the clerk the wrong information. Um, I'll read to you from a uh, update from uh, Delaware Engineering. Um, where they say today, and some question I had about the lead service line application. This is the uh, the water and sewer department or committee will be up to date on what that is as far as uh, applying for funding. Uh, Helen Budrock, who is from Delaware Engineering, has confirmed that the application would be due on uh, August 25th for this round. The application will need to include an engineering report and IUP listing form. These items should be relatively easy to put together. The town will most likely also need to review secret forms but should not need to hold a public hearing. Helen has suggested that the inventory should be a type two action for seeker, but since funding is being applied for, it will likely be better to treat it more as an unlisted action. A short EAF form should therefore be completed and reviewed. Um, and they're asking for this to be done at this meeting so that they can meet the deadline in August. And I'm going to defer this packet can. Okay. So we can get you through it. Please. So what they've provided, <clears throat> Helen and, and, and Delaware Engineering have provided the seeker forms. So you can do the seeker review for a type, uh, for an unlisted action. I think she's right. It really technically probably is a type two action, but it doesn't even require seeker review. But I think she's also right that in an abundance of caution, it's better to be safe than sorry and not have a grant get held up because they take a different view of it. So the part one that was provided was prepared by the engineers, and it basically gives a description of what the project is. This project is basically a data collection. It's an inventory of, of the assets, so to speak, of the, uh, of the, of the water district. Um, it's an inventory including material, material of the existing water services, copper, lead, et cetera. Inventory is supposed to be completed by October of 2024 to remain in compliance with EPA requirements. And the town and its consultants will this staff will uh, perform investigations as necessary to comply all the information needed to complete the inventory. And it's just that collecting data through the, through the district. And that's in a nutshell what it takes three pages of part one to say. So I think the first thing that the board will have to do is accept part one as prepared by its engineering and consultant firm um, as the as the board don't. I would make that motion except part one as prepared by our engineering. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. And then part two is the uh, is basically the impact assessment of, of this project. And there's 11 separate questions that get asked, uh, the recommended responses, and, and, the, and there are two responses to each question. You're either responding by saying to each question, it's no or small impact may occur, 
or the alternative is moderate to large impact may occur. Um, so the 11 questions very quickly are, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? Re the recommended response to all of these are no or small impact. Second one is, will the proposed action result in a change to use or intensity of use of land? Uh, the third question is, will proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? The fourth question is, will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? Five will be, will the, is, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect the existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? Six is, will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Seven is, will the proposed action impact A, public slash private water supplies, or B, private slash uh, public slash private water wastewater treatment utilities? Eight is, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historical, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? Nine is, will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, for example, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? Ten is, will the proposed action result in, incre in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? 11, will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Now, obviously, it makes sense that they recommend no or small because the answer would really be no to all of those because we're doing a data collection. We're not going to do anything that's going to have any impact whatsoever on the ground. So the next step I would recommend is that the board adopt the resolution uh, accepting part two as prepared by the engineers. I would make a motion to accept part two of the Short environmental assessment form as prepared by our engineering firm. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. And next is part three, where you make the actual determination to conclude the secret process. And this is where you take the evaluation of part two, and you would have to do some analysis for anything that was identified as a moderate to large impact. Nothing was. Uh, what they summarize here is the project will involve investigative report work to determine the material and quality of existing water service lines throughout the water district for the purpose of creating an accurate and up-to-date inventory. No installation, construction, demolition, or other permanent physical alterations will occur as part of this project. Visual investigations, point of use testing, and historical research will be used to gather information whenever possible. In some cases, minor temporary excavations may be needed to confirm buried water service material. No significant impacts to the environment should occur as a result of these activities. So based on that analysis, the recommendation is that you check the second box, which is that you are determining based on the information and analysis uh, discussed already in any supporting documentation that the proposed action will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts. So I think at this point, the recommendation would be that the board uh, adopt the motion that accepts part three as presented by the engineers and issues a negative declaration that there will be no significant adverse environmental impacts associated with this rather uninvasive inventory project. I would make that motion to accept part three of the termination of significance from our engineering firm. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. And, and Crystal, they, they gave, I think, a, a, a form of resolution that you could use to incorporate in the yeah. agency, which I think breaks down as, as one, two, and three, those three motions that we just dealt with, and four authorizes the supervisor to sign the. Uh... Can I ask one more question? Not yet. <laughs> So we're good with all that, including that final one. I think you are. Thank you. Um, any other new business before us? Any that I missed? No, I just wanted another announcement just for those that are here. Um, we are still, they're doing a lot of electric work upstairs. 
So we are going to intermit with our power at time. Uh, my close line of our server has been, we're trying to keep it on, um, but there will be at one point when they have to unplug it. So we do our best to let the, let the public know if that has to happen. Um, but that was just what happened just now the internet. They're upstairs working. Okay. So that's really only one after a minute. Um, if there's no other new business before the board, I'm going to open up public comment to the floor first. Bonnie, did you have more public there's comment? One more, I'm sorry, I keep talking, but I don't know. But I Bonnie, do allow to bring happening. home personal papers from upstairs, my stuff, the court clerk took them home. Bonnie, um, I'm not going to get involved in an accusation at this point in time. But you what you're making is an accusation. I asked you, and then you never got back to me. Yes, I, I did. Said, yes. I'm so, also when I stopped you, I said then I was a little bit aggravated. I said, "What? What was it?" You said, "Oh, it was just the building inspection papers." I'm like, "Building inspection." Bonnie, I can't help you if one you interrupt me, and two you don't believe me when I tell you something. I didn't. So no, you why? didn't, because you're asking the same question. That's government papers. I could see when was a pandemic. Or if you and my sister, she works with federal bureau investigation. He does that, but this type of town, you're going to bring home papers and you're really okay. Bonnie, I bring home papers every day. I do so. Of people's personal stuff. You don't know what the papers are, but you make the accusation. That's what I'm trying to to explain to you, Bonnie. I tell you that it's not personal. You say it is personal. You don't want to believe me. I can't change but your it's mind. Papers from the courts. You that uh, they go an, up there with other people that I know. My neighbors are looking at me. They know more stuff than I do. Bonnie, up there. I can't help you. That's going to my lawyer. That would be a good idea. I think that would be an it's excellent really place important. for it. And I believe that I had told you that before. Yeah. Okay. Started your comment. Yes, I just have a couple of uh, follow-up questions. Um, I appreciate that Greg is going to be checking with uh, Ariel at the DBAA for the Riverfest toilet arrangements. However, I'm going to say again, that is only one event and only one specific period of time. Main Street needs to address public facilities. And I believe the town is responsible for that. Not individual businesses that have one thing and then the next week it's gone. They need that needs to be taken care of. It's 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 graceful that people cannot find a toilet when they've been lured into the town for shopping. Oh, we want their money, but you know, forget about any kind of conveniences. Okay, so that's one. I'd like that again. Please follow up on so that it's not just hit and miss when we have public facilities available for the, the town. Um, you mentioned something about the, the lights on Main Street uh, and the electrical uh, the Wi Fi that you're looking to uh, sign up for the town. Have the Wi Fi nodes for those lights been delivered and or installed yet? Yes. And which system will they be on, Spectrum or Frontier? We have got a Frontier system at this point hooked to the building in order to be. Uh, hooked up to it. Right now, it's a price consideration that we're trying to work on. Okay, but the, if the nodes are there, when is the estimated time that they'll be providing Wi-Fi to the street? If I if I can agree to a price and get the board to agree to a price, it's probably going to take anywhere from three to six months for them to come in and do it. And that's their estimate. That's not that's not mine. All right. And my last uh, request is this last piece of business that was being uh, conducted about various things to do with the water tower and the environmental studies for that. Is there any way that that could be just capsulized? I don't need pages and pages, but you were referring to part one, part two, part three. That I believe should be listed on your agenda so that people know what you're talking about. I noticed the, the screen was turned this way and now Crystal's explaining that we lost the Wi-Fi so there's nothing up there to see. But I, there's almost invariably when we sit in these meetings, the agenda A is an event at the very last minute and B is never as extensive as what's on the board 
when we had that, and as of today, all these extra things about under uh, what was it, the new business uh, 5.5, and we went into all these different parts and voted on them. And I, I am absolutely totally unclear on what was being discussed there as far as the environmental impact. And, and yes, no. What that was for was for us to apply for funding for the lead pipe inventory that we are required to do. Okay, but again, I don't need six pages on details. I just would like to have one, two, and three that were being discussed, enumerated somewhere in this. Actually, if you want one, two, or three, you can have my copy right now. That's, That's fine for me, but what about everybody else and well, all the people that were cut off and couldn't see it anyway? I'll, I'll be happy to take it. And, and I honestly don't know the answer to this question, so I really shouldn't ask it because you should always know the answer to the question that you're asking. But when you go to the county and get an agenda, does it include every piece of paper? Every piece of paper? No. Okay. And it's not even as extensive as I would like to see it, but at least the things that they're discussing don't get changed at the last minute and condensed to some three word. No, no, the only thing that got changed in this, in, in fairness to myself, Star, is that I had told the clerk the word water tower instead of our lead pipe inventory. Okay. So, I, I mean, I you know, say, it we, just seems that this is a, an ongoing problem for me. And okay. if that could be just. Well, we'll try to do better. How's that? That's that's a fair thing. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. In the event that anyone else wants it, my copy is available. Okay. I, I will come up and take it out. But keeping in mind that if I've got 30 pages mm -hmm. of what we're going to do and have 15 people in here, do we want to run off 30 pages times 15? I don't know, Ben. If it's if it's on if it's on it's line, not on my, you get down I have the I same agenda that you have. Everyone here at this table has the exact same agenda you have, and we have nothing on the computer screen. Well, okay, but you just spent what 20 minutes discussing and voting on yay and nays. I don't need a whole dictionary full of definitions of what you're talking about. I just need to encapsulate the agenda. So this is an environmental study and it's been approved or not approved. That should be something that could be put in a few words, one, two, three, and four. This is what in, on a side note, I thought Ken did a very good yeah, job of explaining what it was for everybody. Um, Maybe it's me. I like to have something in front of me that I can see. Okay. Just for those who are listening, I was following along as Ken was doing that. He was very faithful to what we had in front of us. <laughs> Sarah, I'm not sidestepping okay, your okay, point. I'm so just trying to address potential concerns. Just getting a little additional information that everyone's discussing to whether or not Ken is shriveling something on the side. No, that was just a point that I was yeah. making, and I think Ken did a very good <laughs> job of explaining <laughs> to it for those people who didn't I have never shriveled. Good. Thank you, Star. I took an oath against Michael. <laughs> I uh, had the honor of intercepting uh, Jane and Craig when they were down on the ball field marking out some of the water lines. It's a fascinating and interesting project in terms of the pavilion and the ball field, which kind of go hand in hand together. And one of the suggestions that came up, which because it's just a big, large rectangle, essentially, is that the diamond cutout does not have to be where it is now. There's nothing says when you revamp that whole thing that that backstop couldn't move. So we got into a discussion with Jane then of how a right-handed power hitter will pull the ball to left field. And I know we went way into side baseball, and I could see her eyes were blazing over. <laughs> but the more, important, side, the more important point here is back to exactly the hmm? I understand exactly what you're talking about. Precisely. Yes, uh, but back to Greg's point here, I think from the public's perspective, what we're most interested in is what the cost factors are going to be here. It's going to be maintenance, it's going to be security and policing, it's going to be sanitation to keep the whole thing clean once you have an ongoing project up. And if we get into conflicts in terms of scheduling pavilion events versus ball field events, you know, do we wind up then with like a parks and recreation department? Is that ultimately where we're all headed with this? I think these are some of the questions from the public perspective that as the committee meets and goes forward, I think we'll be most interested in hearing. Yeah, Thank I think you. 
and like you say, Mike, I think one of the, the biggest questions right now is the maintenance, the, the garbage cleanup, um, you know, who is, who is going to oversee who the renter was? Did the renter clean up? Did the renter do? Um, I'm, I'm sure by the time we're done with it, we'll have that worked out, but I'm, I'm gunning towards the clerk's office that used to rent out the hall the same way. And that's been the discussion. And valid questions, good questions. Any more from the floor? Yes, sir. Oh, I've got a question on the bathroom issue on Main Street. Whoever is doing the event to supply the porta johns is part of the regulations for closing Main Street. Yeah, I, I think what Star was referring to was the rest of the the days of the week when there's not an event, correct? And, and the Chamber of Commerce should be doing it. Lava shouldn't be paying for it. Even Buck shouldn't be paying for it. Chamber of Commerce is the ones that are benefit from it, and they should be paying for it. Thank you. And I got a question on hiring a gardener. For 80 some years, it was just mowed. So somebody got an idea. Oh, let's beautify it. No thought of maintenance at all. You got a $20,000 grant for the pencil. No thought of maintenance. The original, and this is just in, the, in, the, in defense of, of Jane and, and what the attempt was to do. And I, and part of what Star says as far as like the water goes down there and us before the last two monsoons having a dry year, that was supposed to be a wildflower meadow mix that would have looked a little bit different. Um, but your point is well taken. Do we have anybody online that would like to comment? Yes, Iris. I think uh, Iris. Iris. Hold on one second, Iris. All right, Iris, you're on. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I would like to know if anybody has any information at all about what is going on at the medical center on Fifth Street, since there is a dumpster that is there now. And I wanted to know if anybody knows what's happening there. I don't have anything on it. I've, I've heard nothing. Um, I see a dumpster sitting there, that's about it. That's still Highland, not Highland, but Wayne, Wayne, Memorial. Wayne, Memorial. Wayne Memorial's property. So we presume it's their dumpster. We presume. Is there any way to find out what is happening with that? Maybe some forward momentum, since that is a building that would be very important to be viable again. We can try to make phone calls. Um, see I, I, I believe an inquiry has already been made. Yeah, if I hear anything about that inquiry, I will. Uh, be sure to contact you specifically and post it um, in appropriate places. This is Greg. Did you hear me, Iris? No, it, no I did not hear you. Uh, I said that I heard that there was an inquiry made. And if I hear anything about that inquiry or we make another one, as soon as something is heard, I will share it specifically with you and post it uh, in appropriate areas. I heard that now. Thank you very much, Greg. Is there any other public comment on Zoom? If they're not, I'm going to move back into new business because I think I gave everybody a uh, an email that I got from Heather Jaxie from Sullivan County. Yeah. Um, I didn't give you one. I didn't ask. <laughs> uh, Sullivan County would like to put in a grant application to update the 2015 Upper Delaware River making the connections plan. Um, there is a link on that also. Um, the town was a participant in the original plan. 
this application would seek to update. In addition, the updating the plan, we would like to take it to the next step that would be turn it into a program. The step is a legal process that ensures proposed projects and policy are in conformance with state and local laws. As a program, the projects are more fundable and a state must consider the plan when doing work or making decisions in the area. Any recommendations or projects within the town would be for the town and its residents and business owners. The only town resource we would ask is the participation of the town in the process. This could be myself as a supervisor, a town board member, or, or the designee who wants to report to and consult with myself and the board to ensure everything included in the plan is something the town wants. There will be community outreach events as well to gather information, the ideas from the public. Um, she included Jane in this because she put together an application to do a plan that would include the 10 mile river board scout camp. The LWRP, which is a local water revitalization project would create guidelines the state would have to follow in their plans and actions regarding this. We would need a letter or a resolution demonstrating your consent and support for the application and to include the town in the application. I have attached a sample. I need it by July 24th. I apologize for the late request. Um, this was the original Upper Delaware making the connections. I don't know if anybody in the board has had a, seen it before, had a, an idea of what it is, um, but it goes all the way from Hancock to Port Jervis with recommendations. We've seen a couple of recommendations started um, like down in the town of Highland when they put in the, the river uh, access point. That's one of the big things in here is getting more river access points. Um, so it's that, like a comp plan for the whole river. Yeah, right. and part of that, I believe the river access points was also for the fire department because they had for river rescues and stuff. Okay. Um, they mentioned in here about the 10 mile river. Um, supporting it does not tie us to it. It does not cost us anything. It just keeps our participation in it. Um, so if they recommend something, we can just say, well, it, nice has, yeah, it, it has to go before, like it, like she said, it a letter it has to go before the board, the public, the business owners. Um, but it would just mean that, you know, somebody's going to have to be the point in it as far as updating this, right? For our section, for our section. Mm -hmm. But you'll still be involved in the overall yeah. health of the of the product. Um, she did attach a. I believe I attached a yeah, resolution to a sample resolution or whatever. Yeah, that was yeah. So basically, it would just be a resolution committing to the local waterfront revitalization program for the Upper Delaware River and support from Sullivan County application in New York State Department of State to secure funding for a planned initiative that will result in a master plan for the waterfront revitalization along the upper Delaware River from the village of Hancock in Delaware County through the Delaware hamlets of Sullivan County to the city of Fort Jervis in Orange County. You need a motion? I do. I will move that. Second. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Jane's not here. We can put her on it. Yes. <laughs> no teachers. I'll tell her we did, even though we didn't. That's all I've got back into the new business. And that puts us at closing items, board comment. I have a couple of things. Um, Limits one. Uh, uh, we have programming. Uh, Test and Social has programming coming up for kids during the uh, school uh, break Wednesday afternoons uh, in cooperation with the Hive from three to six. You can get more details by uh, yeah. emailing hello at tustandsocial.org or info at tustandyouth.org. Uh, we also have a SAGE session coming up on July 18th, which is next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Uh, for uh, the over 60 set. And also, I just wanted to wish another shout out to Tustin Youth. 
really great participation on the 4th of July and everyone involved with the torrential downpour and still having the fireworks come up on time. That was impressive. And just a reiteration that we are hoping at the next board meeting, we will have a rendering of the pavilion for the park. And if anyone has any specific concerns they would like to address to be sure to attend that meeting or prepare someone with your question, have that discussion before. And like Mike had brought up before, um, you're gonna see in the budget, that'll be the easiest way to see when I'm gonna start that probably in the next two or three weeks, but the board will get it sometime in September, beginning of October to cash out. Great. I, it's a question and a comment. Just, uh, I think, you know, the fire department and, and all of the fire departments in the whole region deserve a great commendation for the your reaction to the big, you know, fire at the uh, Rotor Rooter facility. That was pretty amazing. And two things came up though. Uh, they said that both the, I guess it's Clark Pond and Little Lake Erie, they couldn't draw water. And Bruce, you could, you probably know more than me, but wasn't that a, a problem with sediments? Mm -hmm. What happens is sediment settles down around the intake for the dry okay. hydrant. And usually what we try to do is we try to go out twice a year and back feed them, okay. push the sediment out. So but that, that's always been a problem down here. This one gets a lot of sediment in it quick. But we just overcome it, put our own drafting hoses in there. All right. Yeah, just, I was just wondering if there's anything can be done to remedy that. But yeah, not okay. usually. Okay. The new equipment in Little Lake Erie won't help with that sediment issue? Probably not. It just trickles down. You know, there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, it just seemed, you know, one of the things. Really rafting water at the Ten Mile River access when you're trying to put your boat in it. Right. So. <laughs> Anything from you, Bruce? No. I'm good, I think. Okay. You need a motion to adjourn? I do. Uh, we, <laughs> we, one meeting reminder, we'll probably have our work session uh, next month and that we can work with the annual score on their budget. Will we hear from anything from them in advance of that work session? Uh, yes, we're, we need some information yeah. from them yeah. to make sure it gets to the board in time to review. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. We'll second it. All in favor? Yes. Yes, I. Opposed. Thank you, folks. <laughs>